Welcome to Cage Fighter. I'm Dave O'Donnell. This is my very good mate, Granite Grant Walkman. Grant, how are you? David. Now, today we're talking about UC MMA 37, which is a special, because that's what he is, proper special. Now, Grant, you was in Dubai doing a business deal, another big show we're doing, but you watched it live streamed. What was it like for you watching it when you're not there? Do you know, it... It's a great show. Um, you know, we've picked some really good fights today to watch from that event. But for me, it, I, I'm always missing it because um, what's special about MMA when you go the and see atmosphere. it live is the atmosphere. And you know, at the Troxa, use MMA. When there's a cracking fight, the crowd go bonkers. UK fight fans are some of the loudest, noisiest, and most energetic anywhere. Um, and they really do make the fight event something to, you know, behold. Well, you know what? This was the first fight of the night, and it shows you kind of how loud the guys were yeah. right at the beginning. This is Vitor Silva taking on young Alfie Davis. My name's Alfie Davis. I'm 21 from Enfield, fighting out of Team Titan. My name is Vito Silva, I'm from Brazil. Um, I'm fighting out Team Vengeance from South East London. Yeah, I train twice a day now, six days a week. All disciplines, kickboxing, boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu. I'm ready to go anywhere, I'm a full mixed martial artist. Uh, I've been training hard as I always do, and I'm ready to go. Vito Silva, wherever you want to take this fight, it's up to you. You choose, you lose. I'm either going to knock you out very quickly, or I'm, you're going to get subbed on the ground. There's no way you're winning this fight. All right, I, think I ain't got nothing to say to you. I'm just looking forward to getting the cage and do our business. Peter Silva. So Silva straight into it. Declines the touch of gloves. I like the beginning seconds of every fight, Rob. Guys feeding each other out. Judging their distances. Alfie looks to use his feet. And the fact that Vito is a little bit short, he saw that first kick of his nice thigh kick. That's quite nice. <laughs> to the side <laughs> kick. Nice kick by Alfie Davis there. He is very relaxed. I mean, when I spoke to these guys at the Wayne's. He is super, super cool and calm. Nice chopping little left hook from Davis, trying to catch Silver as he comes forward. Again with a high kick, and it's got him. His legs have gone. He blocked it, and it still got through. Wow. Fantastic kick there by Alfie Davis. He is so calm and cool. Beautiful work. Vito's sitting there, not knowing what hit him. Straight through the guard. <laughs> I mean, credit to Silver, he had his arm up. Just kicked straight through his guard, didn't it? And that's the beauty of these high kicks. You know, sometimes, we don't, as, a, as a striker, you find it hard to throw it because the, the takedown will come from it if it's not correct. And Alfie Davis just did that so well. There was no way that Vito Silva was going to stop that kick. It went through his guard. Hit him flush on the cheek, his feet just went from under him, stood up again and then just lost his balance again. Well, it just shows your first fight of the night, Boom. and Alfie Davis is another Michael Page, another well, young kid, wicked skills. Very young, uh, very well rounded, and we've said it time and time again before, it really shows how the sport has evolved. These youngsters, uh, with very little training, are coming through with great jiu-jitsu, great wrestling, great stand-up. I mean, a, a, such a young kid to go in, a high-pressure fight like that, bang, knock someone out with a head kick. You know, and it, and they're so accurate. A head kick, look, look, yeah. follow on, ba 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 ba. It's none yeah. of this like just rushing in. They analyse the situation because that's how mistakes are made. If you rush in too quick, yeah. it's good night Vienna. But it's not, you know, fighting, it, it's not just about being fit. It's not just about having skills. You know, it's confidence, mental approach, um, you know, energy levels if they've cut weight, etc. And above all, timing. Um, timing so. is the key. I mean, that was striker versus grappler. This fight yeah. we're going to talk about is a world-class wrestler, gold medalist. Versus. And a world-class wrestler. Yeah. Now, them kind of fights can be really boring or really exciting. Do you know, it, um, I, I haven't got a thing about wrestlers, 
but they have got a reputation themselves of not being able to finish fights and it's very frustrating um, take um, Josh Koscheck versus Paul Daly yeah. you know he took it, kept taking him down holding, holding him, him down yeah. and didn't finish the fight it frustrated Paul Daly so much when the <laughs> fight was over he went him. up and clocked Josh Koscheck over, over the back of the head it's the very end frustrating of the UFC career. wrestlers great at taking you down great at controlling you but they don't finish the fight sometimes. really Grant well take a look at this Straight into the action. Mohammed fires straight away. Max looks for the takedown and gets it. Guillotine's in. Not very tight. Mohammed trying to put the pressure on, doing a great job. Gets it in deep. Matas trying to force his way out. I think that head's going to pop. Yeah, it makes it really hard when you look at these boys here, especially the wrestlers. See the head slowly starting to ease its way through. The minute you look at these boys, and they have, they've got that cauliflower ears, you know they've been in a fight. They've either been wrestling their whole lives, or they've definitely been in a fight. And sometimes, uh, and, I, and I've got a small bit that of my ear that's gone hard. When you're in that tight position, it's extra hard getting your head out of it. <laughs> But the fear of getting it ripped off, Rob is gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Maxis, Maxim, top position, trying to break the, the hold that Mohammed has. His nose underhooks to keep control. Well, this is the position Maximatis wants to be in. He is a Ukrainian wrestler. Beautiful. Pass his guard comfortably to side mount. Mohammed trying to slip his leg underneath, but then change his tack. Maximus is using his right knee to control Mohammed Aldamov's hips, finding it really hard to turn into him or turn out of this position. As you can see, really, really tight there. And Beautiful. <laughs> Not even a knee on the belly, just straight over. Now what do you do? The first time I found myself, great Beautiful turn. Work. Great turn there. Great show of agility by both fighters as they toss Whoa. and turn. We have a wrestling match on here. Single leg. Looking for that suplex, couldn't get it. Both these guys showing their wrestling pedigree. Both of them been really, really tight as well. If you look on the left thigh of Maxim, it just looks like he went to a paintballing game. He's got <laughs> two shiners on there. <laughs> Let's stick to the fight. Yeah, both of these guys are really, really good. Beautiful looks to get the arm. Almost came out of nowhere. Mama did the right thing there, getting up as quick as he can. Yeah, in the beginning seconds of this round, I thought Mohamed al did really, really well with his, with his striking. I think we should get some more striking going on. Great clinching going on here. It's going to tap these two boys and see how their fitness goes into the second round. Easy takedown, double leg. Maxim top position. Very interesting to watch, you know, I'm a striker. I lived in America for a year to go learn the wrestling skills and it's it's quite interesting to see how these guys get from one position to the next. They ground control, hip control. And getting in and out of positions, you know, for a guy who's not used to this for a boxer for instance watching MMA for the first time it's a lot of hard work going into the fight surprised they're getting stood up 
As you can hear, there's definitely a couple of boxing fans in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Ukrainians, Poles, we're getting a lot of international fight stars in our shows these days, Rob. And I think what these guys are bringing to the training camps in the UK is their expertise in wrestling. There's a guillotine choke, it's, it's on tight. nice and tight. Really tight. Max has tapped, it's over, he's out. He's out. He's asleep. That's a technical knockout. Beautiful work, and he's about to wake up. Great work by the medical team here. Yeah, they've done this more than once. <laughs> and the oxygen goes on. He'll be absolutely fine. I've been choked out enough times in training, sometimes even asking for it. Yeah, ironically, we used to do that back in the day, sit in the rear naked choke, let someone put you asleep. You have to know what it feels like. Exactly. You have to know what it feels like. There's no point in being in a rear naked choke for the first time and having it applied and not knowing how far you can go with it. You need to know your boundaries. And, and it's a lot safer than being knocked out, Rob. Exactly that. You know, people kind of used to say, well, that's kind of crazy, but it's what you do for a living or it's what you do as a sport, then you have to understand every angle from it. That's what people don't understand when it comes to MMA and boxing. With boxing, you get proper day, drain, drain, <laughs> brain damage. Really? Being knocked out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you'll be stuck there, right? <laughs> or it might. But with, uh, with Jiu Jitsu and with the wrestling and with, with what we do in MMA, it's a, it's a much safer sport. You know, the referees are in tune with where the guy is really hurt and stop the fight. As you can see, Axiomat is perfectly fine from that and lives to fight another day. Wow, and you know what? <laughs> when yeah. they go out, they don't like tapping. These guys, you've yeah. got to hand it to them. He didn't want to tap. But when someone goes out like that, it's a yeah. referee's job. You've got to be right, and he was right on top yeah. of it. Yeah. As soon as you see him go limp, I've seen you often, you hold their hand. If they just fall back down, you're going to stop it. Well, it's very interesting. I, I refereed um, Sammy Berwick years and years ago, and he got triangled, and he the guy, he didn't tap, the guy let go of the triangle because he thought it wasn't working. Sammy Berwick would just gone out and came back too <laughs> and carried on in the fight and won the fight. Um, but as you say, the referee's job is there to protect the fighters. Um, you've got to be right on the ball watching the, the fighters' eyes, um, the body uh, body language, etc., etc., etc. You've got to be right on the ball. Well, Grant, you right. are on the ball, and that is why so you are the referee of referees. Listen, we'll be back with Granite Grant Walkman, the chief referee of all time. After the break, God, I love him. Welcome back to Cage Fire. Are you still getting over that kiss? Grant, when you love someone, I don't believe you, you kiss, kiss me. Oh, Grant, it's all about love and a sport. I love MMA, I love you. Uh, what can I say? You're in a pink shirt and you've just kissed me <laughs> and this is a fight show. Things just go wrong sometimes. Now these two guys, it went quite wrong for one guy. You just check it out and see what you think. This is Vinnie Baldwin taking on Gio Mar no. Marchez. Baldwin versus Gio Marchese. I have a feeling that this is going to be pretty explosive. Yeah, we've seen Joe, uh, the Jackal Marquise fight before. He is very, very good technical fighter. Showboats, but he has some the real talent. skill. Yeah. How light he is on his feet. He almost floats. With a step in. Beautiful. Making Baldwin come to him. You know, the one thing Baldwin's got, he's got long legs. Beautiful. Long arms. He definitely has the reach advantage. Just needs to keep his hands up. Switch his stance. Very confident young man. Gio, something to think about. And right now, Gio is just seeing what the boy can do reach-wise before he uh, starts. Here you go. A nice side kick followed by a front. Nice front kick. An exciting thing about K1 fights and UCMMA is we use MMA gloves. 
Gio keeping his range, beautiful. Nice side kick again. That's the thing you'll find with kickers, they do like to switch stance depending on what leg they're going to use. And some of them are flamboyant, Rob. You can see the hands very, very low now of Gio. Very, very low. Taekwondo stance, bouncing very light, hands low. Beautiful hands. Vinny's in trouble, beautiful axe kick. Wow. And Vinny's up. Takes a lot of guts to get back up from that. The young man's up. Vinny again, looking to catch his opponent. What I like about Vinny is he's happy to throw, you know. I don't uh, recognize the camp he trains out of, but he definitely has the heart. Beautiful combination again by Gio. Referee has trouble getting out of the way of that one. Nice work by Baldwin. Tries again, doesn't quite connect. I think what he needs to do is he needs to complete the shots. Throwing these fantastic looking kicks. <laughs> Big right hand. Joe Marchese definitely just showing off now. Great technique. Catches up his opponent off balance with that front kick. And as you can see, one foot definitely landed on Joe Marchese. You can actually see the toes as well as the foot mark. Oh, beautiful spinning heel kick. Catches Baldwin in the temple. Baldwin showing determination. Second round. Great first round there. Very much a showcase of stylistic kicks. Second round, first round. Very much a flamboyant affair. The taekwondo legs of Gio. Proving too much for Baldwin there. Oh, beautiful shot. Gio Marchese now firing those combinations rather than the single shots. Looking to get the job done. Baldo needs to use his range, but he's stepping into these kicks and these punches from Gio, and Gio is relentless. Picking his shots. The problem with uh, Baldwin is maybe it's inexperienced, but he's throwing the shots, but he's not finishing them off. Halfway he stops, and with his reach, he can actually touch him. Gio again looking to use his feet to devastating effect. Drops his opponent again. Big knee this time. And unbelievably, Vinny Baldwin stands up. Referee calls it. Dan Movahidi steps in, decides enough's enough. It's the correct decision there, Rob. Definitely outclass and a great win for Gio Marchese. Wow, heart of a lion, little little Vinny, but Gio is just, he comes from WCMMA, he's just kick after kick. He's been on the circuit for absolute years doing this semi-contact fighting. A bit yeah. like Michael Page, a bit like Alfie Davis, well, but they have evolved. 
you know what? A lot of people were poo poo the uh, the semi contact and like continuous stuff. The timing. But Michael Page learnt his trade on the mat, doing that kind of stuff, and he learnt skills and making the transition to full contact is something that a lot of those fighters can't do. But when they do, their, fle- they do. their flexibility and athleticism, it, it, you know, is. Well, that's what Alfie Davis is all about. Yeah. Exactly the same. Done all that uh, point scoring stuff. But yeah as transition to an MMA fighter. And another guy that's transitioned really well is the Brazilian, Luis Tosta. Check him out, Wally! So here we go, after a huge entrance, we're finally underway. Villa Brovaca versus Luis Tosta. Tosta, a very, very slippery character. Oh, catches a shot. Guillotine almost semi in, but doesn't quite get locked. Keep your underhook, take your time and pass. Keep your left underhook. Not only does he train at the shoot fight, but he's also one of the jiu jitsu coaches. Right now, expect a bit of a chest. And Foster steps over. Looks a step over, doesn't quite lose the third man very comfortably. Straight, up the Straight across the body, see how low the hips are, Neil. I tell you, that is the happiest Brazilian I've ever come across. He owns bars in the West End. He really works, but he works his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to a T. He's like a master right. chef on the floor. Yeah. I like that. Do you know what? The, the thing is, they, they say with, with a, a Brazilian or a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu expert, you know, if they're a black belt, smack them in the chops once and they become a brown belt. Smack them in the chops twice, they become a purple belt, and so on. But the trouble is, if you don't smack them in the chops, <laughs> They're very dangerous. But the trouble is, he trains at London Shoot. They get smacked in the chops all the yeah, time true, down there. True, and one. they have learned to become odd, proper odd. But this next one, I couldn't even, I couldn't call this bag and tag. And of course, our good old mate Ben Craigie. How yeah, could you, you have tried, called it? You did try and call it before. I know, the fight. sure, mate. How, how, but, odd, how odd is that? But yeah. if you haven't seen this fight, this is one to watch. Ben Craigie taking on Nathan Bag and Tag Jones. My name's Ben Craggy, I'm 29, from South East London, fighting at Team Semtex. Yo, it's b and in the building, Nathan Jones, AKA Mr. Bag and Tag, fighting at a combat company, Richmond, and Team Titan. I serve the community in the day, and I train to fight bad guys at night. Playtime's over, bag and tag. Training's been really tough as ever. Been training with some really hard sparring partners, been working on my overall game. I had to cut a lot of weight to get down here and I brought all the power with me. I've trained half of this fight. This is what I do. I'm in the gym every day and I've been grinding. Taking my game to a new level. I want to show everyone here tonight what's really happening. Nathan, I already beat your BF earlier on in the year. I'm going to bag you tonight and get the whole set. Ben, you're a tough fighter, a real tough cookie. This cookie's got to crumble because I'm a bad bitch. It's bag and tag season. Hashtag that. Fighting hurts. Yeah, long, long <laughs> time ago. <laughs> That's when he started. And trust me, he was launching a huge right hand. Yeah. Jones instantly looks for the takedown. 
wins it comfortably. Ben Craig, he was definitely looking to stay, stand it up. Looking to launch huge shots from now. Nice and tight side control there by Jones. Craigie does well to turn around. Beautiful work by Jones, though, just stuck to the back like glue. Switches the arm underneath. There's a rear naked choke and it's on early nil, it's over. Wow. Bag oh. and tag. Just as he said he was going to do. Unfortunately for Ben Craggy, left it open. Quick fight, quick fight. I mean, if we put a clock on that, I think the entrance probably took maybe three or four times longer than the actual fight. Yeah, the entrance was quite long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, uh, Ben Craggy came out to fight. And unfortunately, great takedown by Nathan Jones. He came and did what he said he was going to come and do. Well, you couldn't have called it experience over new, confident young man, Nathan Jones. But one mistake, that's all it takes in MMA. So many ways to win. So many, so many ways, ways to ways lose. To I'm glad you said that, Grant. I'm glad you said that. But Ben Craggy, uh, you know, he cut down, he came down from middleweight. <sighs> he looked like Robinson Crusoe. I, middleweight, <laughs> he was 95 when I called him about the fight. And he cut to 77. But he came into the, to the uh, weigh-ins. And I went, who is that? It's like Robert's big beard. <laughs> I didn't even recognise him. He lost so much weight. And what a nice guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, he, he came from uh, the reality show that we did yeah. uh, a few years ago. And he was a bit of a pudding, wasn't he, back then? But very, very enthusiastic about the sport. And he went to Team Titan and honed himself into a genuine athlete. And, you know, I felt a bit bad for him after that loss. Yeah. But Nathan Jones is one to watch. Well, believe it or not, Nathan Jones, he trained at Combat Academy. He also trained at Team Titan. Ben Craig couldn't go to Team Titan because it was too yeah because he'd left and it was too far from the travel so he, he he just went to Semtec for a bit and he hadn't really been trained but Nathan Jones has been like hey, on it on it but Ben's just been working went give me a fight I want to get back into it but the, the level of the guys now is, is so high they're um, reaching stars the, you know at the sport is evolving the fighters are evolving you've got to be in tip top shape you cannot just come in. Tip top shape. Yep. Now listen, people, that has been a special from UCMA 37. From Granite Grant Walkman, <laughs> who loves a little kiss every now and again. <laughs> from Dave O'Donnell, we'll see you next time on Cage Fighter.